Hey guys, today I'm going to do a short video about a quirky old German gun called the Schiller Reform Pistol. Believe it or not, this has actually been one of the more difficult guns to research that I've done videos on. Even my Dardic had more information out there about it. There's just nothing to find about the history of these things. So it's going to be a short video, really kind of limited to just my experiences with it and talking about um, how the gun works and things like that. Because as far as history goes, I haven't found anything apart from the fact that these were made early 1900s, between about 1909, 1914, something like that. The designer was named August Schuller, and he was a German. And that's really about it. Um, these go by a few different names that I found online, which also makes searching for them kind of difficult. You'll see here on the magazine, which I'll just pull out, I guess you could call it a magazine. I'll talk about the, the basics of the gun in a second, but you can see printed on the side of this uh, harmonica assembly or whatever, it also says Brufte and DRP. A lot of people think that the name of the gun is actually Brufte, which is actually French for patented, and the DRP stands for Deutsches Reichspatent which means um, German Imperial Patent, that's the patent number right there. That's, that's just patent information. The actual name of the gun is Schiller Reform, um, which is kind of an odd name also, but that's what they're called. And that's not really found anywhere else on the gun except for um, on the, the grips, which are also often found missing. You see there it says Reform. So, kind of already let the cat out of the bag a little bit because first thing you notice is the four barrel configuration, which is strange in its own right. And then second, that's how you load it, is you pull this, uh, it's kind of like an old harmonica gun, which were kind of a novelty back in the late 1800s. You see them a lot with um, some old percussion cap types of guns, but this one actually fires 25 ACP, center fire cartridge, and uh, you pull it out, load up four cartridges of 25 ACP, put it in, and then you are good to go. This is a double action, single action revolver. Well, it's... I say a revolver, and I'll probably keep saying that because it basically functions as a revolver, apart from this safety here, which is kind of unique. But uh, it's a double-action, single-action revolver-style gun. The, in the internals are sort of revolverish. Unfortunately, this one is actually broken. They're extremely hard to find for some reason. I don't know how what the story is. If there were just never very many of them made or what, but they're really hard to find. I got this one for a song because the uh, the single action doesn't work on it, and there's another little glitch in it too. But kind of got it as a project gun. Uh, so it should be single action, double action, but all that works for me is double action, which is fine, really. The gun is very thin and narrow, which is one thing I like about it, and of course it's unloaded as you saw. Um, I mean, that's the width of a 25 ACP bullet right there, and it's just barely wider than that. So this was probably intended to be sort of a vest pocket type of gun, which were popular back then. You know, there was the, the Colt 1908, I just did a visit video recently about the Lignosa Einhand, which was also a German gun like this, and... Uh, you know, those 25 ACP vest pocket guns were just in vogue at the time, and this one being so thin, you get four rounds, and I guess the re reliability of a revolver may have appealed to people, but I think that's kind of what they were going for with the size and the shape of this thing. It's only about 12.5 ounces, so it's very light. It's also pretty small. Pulled out my Beretta, as usual, to show you the size comparison. And the Beretta just makes it look pretty small. So it really is a pretty uh, concealable little gun. You know, it's not really an ideal carry piece nowadays because the caliber is so weak, 25 ACP. But back then, probably wasn't a bad idea to carry something like this. So I'll talk about the shooting impressions of it and kind of how it actually functions. Like I mentioned, the uh, it's not this one isn't perfectly functional, which was okay because I got it super cheap and I'll fix it. And functional ones are actually extremely hard to find. It seems like every one that I've ever seen has been broken in some way. Um, you know, there's I think there's one on Gunbroker right now where the the barrels have been sawed off and the hammer's been bobbed or something and they just they're real hard to find in, in actually good working condition and when you do find them they go for a pretty penny I've seen them at auctions for about eighteen hundred dollars in, in perfect condition all original and all that but anyway the way it works is a lot like a revolver double action pull or single action pull the trigger raises the barrel a little bit fires the first round out of the top here's one of the little quirks I have to pull that back a little bit to get it to work you pull the trigger again see how it raises the barrels and you just do that for all four rounds. And what's kind of cool about it is after each round, the subsequent round that you fire, like after this first round, you'll have a casing in there, obviously. So you fire it, there's a casing right there. Second round, when you fire that round, the, the pressure from that round going off blows the top casing out as the thing rises up. So as it's rising up, it's also clearing out those spent casings from the, uh, the barrel assembly here, which is kind of cool. So you might be wondering about the shape of this hammer. It's very distinct looking, I think. And it also, it seems like it would snag on your clothes if you were really trying to conceal carry it. It actually has a purpose, a design purpose. That being that um, each case that's blown out, it hits this 
rather than flying straight back at you. So, you know, when you uh, fire the gun, that, sec that case that gets blown out flies backwards, hits this, and then it's deflected off instead of hitting you in the face. So it's actually not a bad design, although it probably would snag on your, your pants or your, your trousers or your vest or whatever if you were trying to conceal carry this. What's funny about it, at least with double action mode, when you're actually shooting it at the range, is... I'll show you the sights here. Watch what happens. As you're pulling the trigger, the sights actually rise up. This probably wouldn't be as much of a, a deal if you were shooting it in single action, which I wish I could. But in double action, as you're, you're trying to keep that on target, it raises up. So you kind of have to move the gun downwards as you're pulling the trigger. And it's kind of an issue too in single action. You know, you, you, if you were to cock it back, it would raise the sight picture each time you raised it. But at least then it's not moving in the middle of your trigger pull. But um, So that's kind of a quirk with this design. The sights are pretty rudimentary, of course, as uh, most pocket guns were back then. But, you know, accuracy is actually not that bad. Once you're able to, the trigger pull isn't bad. I'll show it to you again. So, uh, trigger pull is kind of heavy, but it's actually very smooth. And it's not a bad double action trigger pull at all. And I hope to be able to fix this at some point and uh, see what the single action might be like. I have found an exploded parts diagram of this gun, so I might be able to actually do something with it. At least that's the plan. I'm making this video right now, just in case it doesn't ever pan out and I can't get the gun back together or something. You know, at least I've got something that kind of works here. The trigger pull is actually pretty good. Um, and accuracy is not bad, considering what it is. You know, it's at seven yards or whatever, you're getting stuff on man on a man-sized target without any problem. So, um, like I said, here's safety. Pull the trigger and it doesn't do anything which is kind of a unique feature for a revolver. One problem, one design problem I think that comes up when you're shooting this gun is right underneath here is the screw that runs through the gun and it goes through the uh, the axis of the, the hammer, sort of like the fulcrum point. And what happens is every time you pull the trigger that screw starts untwisting itself. So see where it is right there. And I'll pull the trigger. And it's moved just a hair. And after shooting it for a while, what happens is that screw starts to back itself out and it starts interfering with the safety here. So if you've uh, shot it for a while, sometimes the safety is stuck and you can't move it. Or conversely, if you shot it for a while, move this down, then you can't move the safety back up into position because that screw is now sticking out of the side of the gun just from the hammer going back and slowly rotating that screw and untwisting it. So not a very good design right there. Show you a little bit of how the um, action works if I can get that. So you can see there's a little lever there. And it's real simple, really. Just raises that arm up, which raises up the uh, this barrel assembly, and puts the next round in line with the uh, the hammer. So I wish I could go more into the history of it, and I also wish the single action worked on it. But uh, I'll try to make an update video maybe in the future if I ever get it fixed. And by the way, these were always in blue finish. I've seen a couple that were, have been that had a nickel finish applied to them, and that is not original. So don't be fooled. Should have the blued finish, um, this type of grip, not wood or anything. And the the finish on this is actually pretty good, considering I've seen a lot of them that are just completely pitted, and this one actually is pretty smooth. Good amount of the bluing is left. And it's a pretty interesting, rare little gun. It's called a Schuller Reform Pistol, 25 ACP, four rounds. Guess it's better than nothing. And it's certainly unique. Thanks for watching.